ओके अच्छा ये लोधा सर वाला भी किया आपने Good morning, everyone. Uh, my uh, my today's topic is about the antimicrobial resistance in escape pathogen, and my moderator is Dr. Hitendra Gautam sir. Now, since the introduction of the wonder drug, the penicillin, which has started in the era of 1928, since uh, it has tremendously changed the modern uh, medicine. And uh, in that, the uh, the uh, since my topic is about the escape pathogen, this encompasses the six pathogens, namely Enterococcus officium, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Acinetobacter vermini. Uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Enterobacter species. Now, these were, uh, according to the WHO in 2017, they were designated as a priority status, and they were and they were uh, classified into the three classes. That is, uh, the three priority status. That is the critical, high, and thirteen. So there are total uh, around twelve pathogens here. Out of it, the top five spots are being held by the escape pathogens. That is, Acinetobacter vermini. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, Enterobacteriae, Carbapenem resistant, uh, then followed followed by the uh, Enterococcus officium, Staphylococcus aureus. Now, the, how did they classify? They classified based on the uh, research and the development of the new uh, new antibiotic. That is how much urgent this uh, antibiotic is needed for these organisms. According to the same WHO uh, uh, report, it was estimated that. Uh, around uh, 2050, the uh, the deaths predicted uh, by AMR due to uh, in 2050 uh, in Asia alone would be around 4 crores 7 lakh 30 thousand, and India. Uh, when we talk about India, it will be around 2 million uh, deaths by uh, due to just because of AMR. And the interesting fact about this escape pathogen that it is about it escape the biocidal action of the uh, antibiotics. And what are what are the characteristics which makes it very unique than when compared to the other priority status uh, bacteria is that these are different uh, that these are differentiated from other pathogens due to their increased resistance to commonly used antibiotics like penicillin, uh, vancomycin, and carbapenem. And the and this resistance pattern in these pathogens apart uh, uh, not not just these pathogens in other two uh, rest of the pathogens that is out of twelve. Is that uh, they are not uniformly uh, uh, same across the uh, different uh, um, um, among the different loca geographical locations. Uh, most of the resistance problem in the hospital are concentrated in a limited number of bacterial species, which have become to known as the escape pathogens. The resistance rates are very substantial, and the rates of the resistance vary vary geographically, as I have dis uh, as I have told you before. Uh, and one 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 more reason for them being classified into a separate group called escape pathogens because these are the common uh, isolated organism uh, in the clinical specimen uh, overall like example i would say uh, the, in icmr uh, amr data of recent uh, past that is in 2019 what they have released and according to that the enterobacteriae was uh, Was cultured in among uh, 48% uh, in 48% non-fermenting back non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli constituted about 26%. Staphylococcus in 15%, Enterococci in 6%, and rest 3.3%. So, thereby by these figures, you can estimate that the escape pathogens are not just uh, problematic in put in terms of resistance mechanism, but they are also equally important when it comes to uh, isolating this organism from the clinical specimen so that's why they are grouped under one such group of escape pathogens now coming to the individual bacterial profiles uh, with the uh, 
uh, with this with the, with the bacteria like and first e stands for the enterococcus species now these are the, uh, the gram positive facultative anaerobes which are opportunistic pathogens which are frequently involved in the hiv that is hospital acquired infection especially among the immunocompromised uh, patients now this along with the enterobacteria and the staphylococcus aureus is considered as a triple threat so together three are called the triple threat and over the past few decades we can see that enterococcus species was one of the leading causes of the uh hospital acquired infection uh, and uh, infection and we know that the enterococcus species are around uh, more than 49 species but the most clinically relevant species would be uh, fecium fecalis other would be gallinarium cassiflavus and rest of them which are not uh, commonly isolated now most enterococcus species uh, infections are endogenously acquired but cross infection may occur in the hospitalized patient now the dissemination of this enterococcus was occurred in the two separate ways the what are the two separate ways the first it was the uh, fecalis wave the first the, the predominated was in early 1980s was uh, the dissemination of the enterococcus fecalis later on the uh, the fecium was uh, predominating now in 1988 the atelier et al were the first one to report vancomycin resistance fe enterococcus fecalis and fecium in the england now according to the uh, center for dynamic uh, center for disease dynamics uh, economics and the policy this in collaboration with the who has come up with the antimicrobial resistance pattern that is um, from that in 2017 which shows that the aminoglycoside were around 79% resistant amino penicillin 72 and 27% respectively now but the problem with this data was that it has only just few isolates as you can see it was 232 isolates 299 and 340 314 isolates when coming to the 2019 data as published by the icmr the vancomycin resistance was around 7.9% which was overall in 2019 and when you look back to, to the years it is 7% uh, uh, in 2014 and 4% in the 2018 in all the vrd uh, uh, infections uh, in all the vrd infections the resistance was mediated by the uh, solely by the van ag but very few uh, have isolates exhibited this van b genotype and no other uh, genes were detected now coming to the other pathogen the second pathogen that is the staphylococcus aureus now these um, organ now this organism uh, is a common representative of the skin moist areas that is anterior nasal and the axilla now the 60% uh, around 60% are known as an intermittent carriers harboring the staphylococcus irregular that's why they are called as intermittent carriers whereas the rest 20% are known as a persi persistent carriers almost uh, carry one single strain of staphylococcus aureus now the first uh, wave of the mrsa uh, or you can say the first, it was first discovered as soon as the penicillin usage started so uh, thereafter the uh, the resistance to this penicillin uh, started so mrsa was first discovered in around 1961 now still it is considered as a significant burden in the healthcare setting globally now there are two types of mrsa we come across that is the uh, community acquired mrsa and the uh, hospital acquired mrsa coming to the risk factors uh, the risk factors there are no uh, as such risk factors which are uh, for the community uh, acquired mrsa but whereas for the hospital acquired mrsa the recent hospitalization surgery living in the nursing home indwelling catheters are there now the clinical syndrome are uh, which is associated with the mrsa of community acquired will be ssr ssti's necrotizing pneumonia uh, necrotizing fasciitis and the osteomyelitis and the hmrsa would be uh, hospital acquired pneumonia and the uh, gut stream infection it is persi resistant and it is multi resistant the virulence factor is very highly it is very high for the community acquired and it is less virulent uh, in the hospital acquired and the, the staphylococcus cascade chromosome mec it is of type 4 uh, very few cases with the 5 and the 6 whereas hospital acquired mrsa has been uh, documented with type 1 2 and 3 coming to the capsula pneumonia uh, the cephalosporinases and the carbapenem antibiotics have been a mainstay treatment in the treatment of the capsula pneumonia 
the efficacy has been compromised by the widespread acquisition of the genes encoding enzymes such as uh, ESBLs uh, that is expanded extended spectrum beta lactamases carbapenemases which mediate the respective uh, resistance of these critical drugs. Now, according to the ICMR data, uh, which has been published recently, it is shown that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the resistance pattern of the ceftazidime, ceftazidine, hemicacin has reached um, almost above 50% with few cases uh, and also to the carbapenem, like imipenem, mirupenem, as we can see from this uh, diagram. And a few, few cases of the cholesterol resistance have also been emerging um, uh, in Capsheldon pneumonia. Now the uh, mortality uh, of these uh, cases would be around 40% and have been associated with the severe infections as caused by the CRE. Now carbapenem now there is one term called carbapenem resistant Klebsiella pneumonia which has been reported in the, uh, in the uh, early of 2000 that is 2001 which is associated with the severe inf invasive infections. Now according to the CD depth, uh, the, uh, 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 that is the Indian data of the Klebsiella pneumonia, they are 80% resistant to the cephalosporinases and 60% resistant to the uh, carbapenemases. Now coming to the uh, third organism that is the Acinetobacter gominae. Now as we all know this is uh, infection which is particularly seen in the hospital uh, patients and the patient with a significant or, or else with the uh, patients who are in significant touch with the uh, healthcare system. And it has been the, seen that it is associated with the hot and the humid geographical climate. The infection rates are uh, low compared to those uh, with the other escape pathogen. Though the infection rates uh, of the, with the Sinotobacter vomini is low, but the uh, uh, physiological propensity of the Sinotobacter vomini to gain the resistance is, is four times higher when compared to the other bacteria. So infection is low, but the resistance rate is a bit higher in this Sinoto. Now the 45% of these uh, global isolate when I'm talking, I mean uh, this 45% what I'm talking is the global isolate where MDR resistant. Now the MDR uh, definition would be the uh, uh, acquired uh, uh, non-susceptibility to at least one of the agents uh, in three or more antimicrobial uh, categories. And 60% uh, and among these 60% were seen in the Latin America and the Middle East. And Turkey and Greece have almost reported 90% of the uh, MDR in the Acinetobacter. Now, according to the CD depth, uh, in, from, in 2017, amikacin was reported around 75% resistant, carbapenem 77%, ceftazidime 84%, and fluoroquinolone 58% resistance. And uh, the, in 2019, the amikacin, cefepam, and ceftazidime have seen the resistance of around more than 50%, reaching around uh, 80%, with a few very few cases of the cholesterol resistant. Now, Pseudomonas erigenosa, though this is also one of the commonest cause of the nosocomial infection, that is around 10%, and, uh, it, is com uh, it, and it is also seen as a community acquired infection. Uh, it has an ability to persist uh, chronic in the host and evade the antibiotic treatment. Intrinsic uh, resistance to a wide array of antimicrobial uh, um, agents. Uh, it is, in, it is uh, intrinsically resistant. And uh, globally, AMR pattern really substantially uh, colonizes moist environment where the biofilm formation predisposes for persistence, immune evasion and antimicrobial resistance. Now, according to the CD depth, the, in 2017, the amikacin rates, uh, the, uh, that is 32% which were resistant, aminoglycoside with 33%, carbapenem 30 and ceftazidime 33 and polymyxin were just around the 4%. But uh, in the recent ICMR guidelines, it is seen uh, almost similar data, that is uh, amikacin reaching around 50% and the uh, carbapenems were around the uh, 40% and cholesterol in very few cases of less than 10% in both the urine and the blood isolates. And uh, coming to the Enterobacter species, the significant threat it is uh, Enterobacter is also one of the leading causes of the uh, hospital acquired infection, but here it is the neonatal warts and which are which are to the patients who are uh, dependent on the mechanical ventilation. The emergence of the Enterobacter species are clinically uh, significant MDR pathogens which has also occurred in this epidemic wave, just like uh, uh, the enterococcus. The now, from 1990-90 to 2003, aerogenes, enter, uh, enterobacter aerogenes was clinically pre prevalent. 
and from 2018 and aerogenes were superseded by the cloacae as most commonly clinical isolated specimen uh, species and uh, the uh, carbapenem resistance is now uh, reported in all WHO health regions. Uh, moreover, the fan dive resistance has also emerged displaying resistance to the cholesterol and it is capable of harboring the subpopulations of the cholesterol resistance bacteria which are undetectable using the current diagnostic uh, strategy. So uh, according to the CD that the cephalosporin resistance, the third generation cephalosporin were around 62% and fluoroquinolone resistance were around the uh, 37%. According to this is the 2016 data. Uh, and this is a susceptibility pattern of the Enterobacter species in the 2019, which ha which showed the lowest susceptibility, lowest susceptibility to the cefotaxime and the ceftazidine, uh, respectively. Uh, no, from no, uh, with this uh, introduction, uh, I would now go to the topic of the antimicrobial resistance, which is commonly uh, uh, encountered in the escape pathogens. Now, one of the com for four common. Uh, ways of antimicrobial resistance in these pathogens would be the first of all inactivating the water antibiotic regime that is inactivation or altering the antimicrobial molecule or second they modifying the target mechanism the target sites third the they, they're reducing the uh, antibiotic penetration accumulation uh, and the last is the other mechanism which, uh, like posins and the efflux pumps that is the first going to the first inactivation of the or inactivation or alteration of the antimicrobial molecule. Now, um, in the co coming to the inactivation, uh, there are two types like beta lactamases and the amino glycolases. Now, since the introduction of the penicillin, now beta lactamases has also been uh, docu uh, documented, and uh, till now, more than uh, 2600 uh, beta lactamases have been reported. Which are you now this this is the one of the most important resistance mechanism in case of the beta lactamases and these beta lactamases have been uh, classified according to the primary molecule like in Bouchier uh, in Ambler's classification is uh, based on the molecular structure or combined hydrolytic and inhibition functional properties that is the uh, Bouchier of this classification. Now this uh, Ambler A class is, uh, the, the Ambler will have four classes A, B, C, D and in Ambler A will have the serine proteases in the uh, active site uh, which, uh, which will involve the penicillinases, narrow spectrum cephalosporinases and extended, extended spectrum cephalosporinases and the uh, commonest uh, 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 enzymes would be uh, SHV, TEM and CTA and the Ambler class B that is metallo beta lactamases will have the uh, 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 Zinc in their active site, and um, uh, it, the commonly isolated uh, enzymes would be IMP, VIM, and NDM. And in the C, that is the uh, chromosomally mediated, that is the class C, is cephalosporinases, which, uh, which encounters AMP C. And the last is oxacillinases, penicillin, and oxacillin, which have uh, oxa uh, 1 to oxa 248. The next is the AMAs, that is uh, aminoglycoside modifying enzyme. This is also one of the commonest mechanism of the um, resistance, and it has three classes of the AME. That is APH, that is aminoglycoside phosphotransferases, uh, aminoglycoside AAC, aminoglycoside acyl transferases, and aminoglycoside, nucle amino aminoglycoside nucleotide transferases. Now these are the three uh, classes of the uh, AMAs of, of, of which APH are common uh, or most common. Uh, coming to uh, the uh, AMS data where it has been uh, you know, where it has been studied uh, uh, under Dr. Hitinger Gautam sir and uh, AMS data, uh, it is seen that uh, total 40 isolates of acinetobacter were collected. Out of that, 55 were uh, identified to have AME gene. Uh, and out of that, the 50% has ANT. That is, uh, this uh, AMEs are again divided into subclasses like 3 dash uh, APH 3 dash and all that. And so, 50% uh, are ANT genes and 45% uh, for the AAC genes and 9.1% uh, that is a subclass of AAC that is amino amino glycoside acyl transferase that is 9.1% and APH where around the 18%. And uh, out of that, uh, these 55 isolates, 45.4 isolates uh, uh, carrying AME genes where XDR and 13.6 isolates were in the MDR. 
and isolates carrying these AMB genes showed resistance to uh, both the gentamicin and amikacin in the uh, rates of 50 to uh, 50 and 63.6 uh, percent. Now this data has been under the process uh, in the journal, International Journal of Antimicrobial uh, Resistance. Now, uh, this is the data which uh, uh, frequency of AMEs, uh, genotype and the phenotypic outcome that out of the 8 isolates, 6 were resistant to amino glycoside and the 6, 5 were resistant to the uh, gentamicin. In ASEs, 1 were resist, uh, one were resistant uh, to the amino glycoside and 1 to the gentamicin. And likewise, APH, uh, 1 was resistant to the amino glycoside and other was resistant to the uh, gentamicin. Uh, coming to the, uh, uh, the next mechanism, we have done uh, the inactivation of alteration of the antimicrobial molecule. Coming to the second mechanism, that is the target site modification. Now, what the antimicrobial will uh, first, uh, it will go, uh, first it will enter, then second is uh, they'll, uh, they'll act on the uh, target site. Now, if you modify this target, the antimicrobial doesn't work. So, it confers a resistance. So, examples would be and what are the targets now there are different targets in the uh, anti uh, in the, the mechanism like enzyme target enzyme modification ribosomal target site alteration and the cell wall precursor precursor alteration now in the target enzyme modification we have uh, that is uh, the PB2A mod that is PB2A that is aging which is one of the commonest uh, target enzyme modification that is uh, the um, uh, which is conferred by the uh, MKA gene that is the uh, MKA gene will code for the pbp 2 a that is penicillin binding proteins uh, A and which is located in the staphylococcus uh, uh, cascade chromosome MEC. And uh, likewise, we have uh, the uh, MEA, uh, MECP and the MECC, the clearance, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the distribution of this MECB has been very unclear uh, and the MECC has been low prevalence uh, uh, which was seen in the livestock and uh, in the humans and in the Europe. And uh, likewise, uh, PB2, PBP2A is also seen in the Enterococcus faecium and Enterococcus faecalis and PBP5 is specially uh, is seen in the 90% strains of the Enterococcus faecium strain. And Acinetobacter bomini has also been uh, seen with the PBP, uh, uh, that is the penicillin binding protein, but which is very uncommon. Now, coming to the other target site modification is the topoisomerases. Now, topoisomerases act, uh, act through DNA guides, uh, DNA guides, uh, which is uh, the uh, that, sorry, uh, fluoroquinolone. The DNA guides code uh, code with DNA guide A and guide B and topoisomerases with the par C and the par E. Now the, the, the now with the spontaneous mutation in the guide A and the part C will give the amino change in the amino acid uh, changes that is that will give the amino acid changes in the sequence that will give the fluoroquinolone resistance. Not just that the beta subunit alteration also contribute uh, a beta subunit of the ribosome also contribute to the reduced susceptibility of the fluoroquinolone. The one more mechanism of this uh, fluoroquinolone resistance is the QNR family, that is the QNR A, QNR B, which also binds to the DNA guided. It, it is uh, commonly uh, mediated by plasmid and commonly seen in the uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae and Enterobacter species. Now coming to the third uh, ribosome, uh, the target side that is the ribosome is, is, is the, uh, is this that, uh, that is the ERM genes and the CFR genes. Now this ER, uh, ERM genes uh, will uh, the, uh, confer resistance to the MLSB agent that is macrolide, lincosomides and streptoglamins type B. Now they help in the methylation of the 23, RRS, uh, 23, 23 RRNA whereby it reduces the binding of this MLSB agent. Likewise, we have uh, an ERMC, uh, ERMC, uh, ERMC, which has been associated with the resistance in methylene uh, susceptible staph aureus and ERMB, which is found in the enterococcus. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and a next gene for this ribosomal target we have is the CFR genes, which, is, which also do the methylation of the 23 RRS DNA, but seen in the staphylococcus state, which is responsible for the lenozole resistance. 
Now, the cell wall precursors. Now, the uh, cell wall precursor. This is also the target site modification. Uh, then uh, it is a. Uh, it is well known fact that the peptidoglycans, uh, sorry, glycopeptides will act on the outer cell wall layer, or uh, that is, which is made up of the DNA, DNA peptidoglycan residue. Now, the when the resistance comes, that is through Van G, that is especially seen in the enterococci. What the hot happens is. Uh, this uh, DLA DLA uh, DLA DLA uh, is uh, replaced with the D, uh, the last termin the termini will be replaced by lactate or the serine, or it is the overproduction of the uh, DD carboxypeptidase that will eliminate the normal DLA DLA precursor. Now that will confer the resistance to this uh, uh, drug. Now, uh, since we are talking about this vancomycin uh, uh, resistant, it is uh, in 2002 it has been reported that uh, vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus was also reported. Now, when do we call v VRSA, that is when the MIC was more than 60 microgram per ml. And uh, it is most commonly seen when the patients uh, uh, with, the, with prior or current VRE infection, but though the frequency is very low. Now, uh, there is a term called hetero, uh, that is heterogeneous visa. Now, what is that? The heterogeneous visa, uh, so visa is when, the, when there is a prolonged exposure of the vancomycin, there is a small subset of the population exhibit the MIC of more than 4 micrograms per ml. And the, the, that is, uh, and, and visa is when the MIC is between two, 4 to 8 uh, micrograms per ml. Though the precise underlying mechanism of this uh, uh, H visa is not understood, but uh, it is there. Then, uh, when in end when it comes to the enterococci resistant, it is also seen that the um, uh, dactomycin resistant is also been observed. Not just in the enterococci, it is also observed in the staph aureus. The mechanism of the resistance, uh, is like uh, previously, it has to be fully uh, elucidated. Mm. Now, um, I have talked in the previous slide, there is a uh, emergence of the uh, polymyxin resistance in Capsula, Pneumonia, Acinetobacter and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now, that, uh, that occurs because due to the uh, outer membrane protein is remodeled and lipopolysaccharide structures. That, 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 will, give the neg uh, that will reduce the negative charges, uh, uh, that will reduce the negative charges and it re thereby reducing the polymyxin binding and thereby uh, conferring it as a resistance. Now the next mechanism is regarding the antibiotic uh, penetration and the accumulation. That is here we come across the two things that is the porins and the efflux pumps. Now porins. Now porins. Uh, the por what are porins? Porins are the uh, open uh, channels that span between the uh, outer membrane and allow the passive. Um, Penetration of the uh, hydrophilic molecules, uh, which includes the beta lactam uh, antibiotics. Now, the earliest example of the pollens come from the uh, 1981 data, that is from the E. coli, that is OMPF pollen, uh, and then, then from there on, the many pollens was discovered. Now, they are classified. Now, these pollens are also classified according to their activity and the functional structures and regulation. The gram-negative bacteria like Pseudomonas and Acinetobacter possess a very low susceptibility to these beta-lactam due to the lower number of the porins. Now, Pseudomonas, uh, and when, when it comes to the porin and Pseudomonas, uh, the OPRD is linked to the reduced carbapenem uh, susceptibility and CRAO in the Acinetobacter is associated with the imipenem resistance. And we have also seen that uh, there is a porin exchange, that is the sorbitol uh, sensitive OMP35 is exchanged with the uh, OMP36. But the, what happens is that there is a reduced uh, size of the, uh, that is the channel, I mean, I mean channel of the uh, porin and thereby the drug cannot enter. So this is seen, a classical example is seen in the capsular pneumonia. Or you can see when there is a protein uh, uh, dec decrease porin expression, this was, this is was seen in the enterobacter. And then there, if there is a mutation in the potents, as seen in the new uh, E. coli. Uh, coming to the efflux pumps, the, 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 uh, no, the efflux pumps are the transport proteins that will help in the exclusion or the extrusion of the toxic substances uh, within the cell to the uh, external environment. Now there are, there are now there are seven families of the uh, efflux pumps. Out of that, uh, the these uh, there are. Uh, 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 a major facilitator, meat, uh, multi-drug and the toxic efflux, R&D, which is the most common, 
uh, SMR small multi drug resistant ABC ATP binding casket and the proteobacterial antimicrobial compound efflux. This is the PACE family. Nizal, just to correct, six families. Six families, yeah. Initially it was five. Five. Six, six was right? introduced. Yes. Just a six. Don't don't say seven. Low number zero. Continue. Now the organisms uh, are coming to the examples. Uh, the uh, MX AB OPRM. It is seen in the uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which confers a resistance to the fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosin, and beta lactam uh, drugs. And uh, ACR AB the antolcy is seen in the uh, Glepsiella pneumonia and Enterobacter, and which is a multi drug uh, resistant, uh, it is uh, resistant to the many drugs. And uh, this Enterobacter uh, it, it belongs to the ABC family of the efflux pumps that is ADE, uh, ADE, ABC, ADE, FGH, and ADE, ADE IJK, which is seen in the Enterobacter, uh, is also seen in the broad range of the antibiotics like fluoroquinolones, tetracyclines, macrolides, and chlorothenicol. Likewise, we have we have seen uh, we, uh, we can see the efflux pumps in the Klebsiella pneumoniae and Enterobacter species conferring the resistance to the chlor. Chloramphenicol and the TG cyclin. Um, now, this is the uh, uh, what slide? The other slide. Okay. Uh, the now this was the data which was collected from uh, 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 our lab, which was shown that the uh, the which was shown that 40 uh, 45 percent of the uh, Acinetobacter species uh, and uh, uh, were isolated. Out of that, uh, these were the uh, efflux pumps which was uh, present. Uh, that is ADE, ADE B, and ADE A. Out of that, uh, we can see here that uh, uh, ADE and ADE. B, yeah, uh, two, two were the isolate and out of the, which were considered to be the MIC values of these uh, d d d isolates were four, which is considered to be the uh, intermediate. So when we after put up when we put up the, uh, the blocker that is the inhibitor, the resistor the from intermediate it became to the sensitive. Now this proves that there is the. Uh, 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 appear uh, exhibition uh, expression. expression that there is an expression of this uh, efflux pumps in these acinetobacter uh, 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 species. Uh, now, in the, the data which I got uh, from the, the, the lab, which is shown that the 45 percent of these isolate were MDR and the uh, rest of them were uh, XDR. Yeah. So, the other slide I couldn't put uh, by sending the slides, I might put that slide. So, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, then coming to and this uh, the data is in uh, uh, in process of uh, publishing in the International Journal of the Antimicrobial uh, Basic Medical Research Science. Now coming to the last mechanism that is the other mechanism which includes uh, the biofilms. We all know that the biofilms are the structured surface attached microbial uh, colonies encased in extra micro, extracellular matrix. Now they play a very important role in the chronic infection. Like example, uh, the cystic fibrosis and the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Especially when there is an indwelling catheter. Now they form a, uh, these biofilms and they can, uh, pre present chronically. Uh, pre present uh, inside these biofilms. And not just in the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It is also seen with this case is also seen with the Staphylococcus aureus and Acinetobacter bumbinae. Uh, then there is a reduced uh, antibacterial anti uh, antibiotic susceptibility exhibited by the biofilm, which is a multifactorial uh, process. Now coming to the uh, two terms that is tolerance and the persistence. Now there is a uh, tolerance that is uh, when the entire bacterial population can withstand the you know, transient exposure of high doses of the bactericidal antibiotics is the tolerance that is what is the antibiotics we give the bio. Uh, bacteria is going to survive that uh, uh, antibiotic that is the tolerance whereas the persistence means uh, whenever we remove the uh, antibiotic the, the they start growing that is uh, persistent the persistent population are able to resume growth causing relapsing or chronic infection upon treatment cessation 
you know the another mechanism which is very interesting is the intracellular survival now this uh, which is uh, commonly seen or we can say it is uh, most commonly seen in the escape pathogen or studied in the escape pathogen is the intracellular survival the commonest organism in escape pathogen is also the klebsiella pneumoniae enterococcus faecalis and the staphylococcus aureus now these microbes will irritate the host immune response and also the host defenses and also the antimicrobial uh, uh, agent by forming uh, by hiding in the uh, alveolar uh, by hiding in the macrophages through uh, through compart compartmentalization now th through the when uh, when they hide inside these macrophages uh, they can evade not just the immune response uh, immune host defenses but also the uh, antibiotic now this might give a reservoir for the disseminated or the latent infection in these uh, organisms so this is all this is about the intracellular survival Coming to the mobile biogenetic elements, the uh, the uh, association of mobile genetic elements and uh, 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 AMR uh, in escape pathogens or in general AMR is uh, extensively studied. Hereby, I am just providing a brief review on the uh, uh, mobile genetic elements. And we all know that the mobile genetic elements they are not nothing but the uh, segments of the DNA. They capture the AMR gene from the chromosome or from the genome and they mediate their movement within the genome that is intracellular mobility or uh, between the uh, different cells that is intercellular mobility. So they catch the genes and they uh, mediate it. So that's how they are he um, helping in the AMR uh, mechanism. Uh, here the mobile genetic elements uh, would be insertion sequence and transposon with the transposon 9 that is TN9 is responsible for chlorophenicol resistance and TN10 for the uh, tetracycline resistance. Whereas the plasmids are responsible for MDR pathogens in Klebsiella pneumoniae and Enterobacter species. And uh, integrated conjugated elements in Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Enterococcus. These are all the mobile genetic elements. And the genomic island, this is also a biogenetic element which is commonly seen in the MRSA isolate in the uh, Staphylococcus cascade in uh, genomic island. Now, in, in the tabular column, the enterococcus will confer to vancomycin uh, through a uh, transposon, and staphylococcus confer resistance to the beta lactam uh, also through a transposon. Likewise, uh, Klebsiella, Acinato, Pseudomonas uh, through insertion sequence transposon and uh, plasmids, respectively. No. Now, uh, the, when, you, uh, when you talk about the MGE, how are they going to be uh, uh, transferred? I mean, the, it is due to the horizontal, horizontal gene transfer. Now, this horizontal gene transfer uh, has the three primary mechanisms, that is the conjugation, transduction and transformation. Out of this, the conjugation is the, uh, the dissemination of these uh, mobile genetic elements is most commonly through the uh, conjugation. Transduction is also uh, uh, contribute but very less studied whereas transformation was never uh, was never documented but hypothetically or uh, theory, uh, theoretically it is possible to uptake a DNA from an um, uh, organism and can transfer but it has not been documented as of now. Now, the another mechanism uh, which is uh, I, uh, which, uh, which is the, of the co-selection. Now, the bacterial pathogens, uh, the, uh, the bacterial population, they promote the persistence of the AMR genes. Now, the co-selection. What is co-selection? Co-selection is that the two um, feature, two features will, will coexist together. Like example, I would say the antibiotic resistance and the biocide resistance share a common mechanism. Example here, the uh, cell wall membrane prevents the entry into the uh, into the cell or upregulation of the efflux from to remove unwanted compounds from the cell. Uh, this efflux will remove, in general, will remove the uh, toxic compound, but the bacterial uh, pathogens, the bacterial population will take this as an advantage and they uh, remove out the, uh, or the efflux out the uh, uh, antibiotics, thereby uh, rendering it uh, resistant. So this is about the co-selection. Now saying all about the problems, let's discuss about the uh, solutions of it, that is the therapeutic advances against the uh, escape pathogen. When we say about the discovery of the new drug, it is not that easy, it is very highly challenging. And since to 1960 up till today, 
only four classes of uh, antibiotic has been uh, four class new classes of the antibiotic have been uh, introduced and when we when we use the term novel antibiotic that means it is a it is a uh, successive compound derived from the already existing uh, antibiotic classes or the categories that is the novel antibiotic that is a term we use for the novel antibiotic now but why do we need the novel antibiotic first first and the foremost uh, the first and the foremost is the uh, rapid spread second uh, it is increasing the economic burden on the healthcare that is if the person is constantly in the hospital that is increasing its cost second is a therapeutic failure theek hai then uh, second is a therapeutic failure third is the increased morbidity and last is the increased mortality now because of this we need a, we need the newer antibiotic now the uh, recently approved uh, fda and uh, dgci uh, newer antimicrobials would be uh, these are the following out of that the uh, the red these are highlighted that is plazomycin evaricycline and omadecycline Uh, which is which comes under the class of aminoglycoside tetracycline and tetracycline are less, uh, are u- useful for the uh, complicated UTIs con- to complicated intra abdominal infections and uh, omadecycline is used for the acute bacterial skin and the uh, skin structure infection the, uh, and co- complicated UTI now the, now other drugs which have been uh, u- uh, for the use is that is blbli that is beta lactamase and beta lactamase inhibitor here the beta lactam is the, the, the first two that is the meropenem verbalbactam ceftazidim avibactam semipenem celastin and velbactam now this meropenem the this verbalbactam was the first bli uh, so meropenem uh, which is a carbapenem class uh, class of drug was approved in uh, around 2017 august it is useful for the Uh, complicated UTI. Whereas ceftazidine and avibactam, which has also been approved around the same time, was uh, approved for complicated intra-abdominal infections and complicated UTI. Now, uh, recent drugs which have been approved, that is in the July 2019, is imipenem celastin and avibactam. Imipenem celastin was given previously. Now they have added the third uh, BLI. Uh, uh, beta lactam is inhibitor after avibactam and avibactam is. Uh, relevant but uh, it is not uh, not approved for the, the, the dcgi but it has approved fda it has got fda approval in 2019 it is uh, used for the uh, hospital acquired uh, bacterial pneumonia and ventilator associated bacterial pneumonia and we have other two uh, we have other two the like uh, lactifloxacin which is again a novel fluoroquinolone resistant which is used for the uh, 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 the uh, bacterial uh, pneumonia the uh, one of the it, it, what makes it different from the fluoroquinolone that it has the same structure like the fluoroquinolone but it has amino acid uh, for, at the first and the seventh position the amino acid is changed now this makes uh, this makes it more uh, in the pulmon it, it has more pulmonary action when compared to the other uh, fluoroquinolone that's why it is used for the bacterial pneumonia and then next is the cefidiroquel cefidiroquel that is uh, comes under uh, that has been uh, first sidrofor antibiotic which has been approved in the uh, uh, for complicated urinary tract infection um, complicated now here the cefalosporin uh, uh, will enter into the uh, and uh, that is uh, the bacterial cell wall not through the normal uh, porin channel but through the uh, bacterial uh, iron uh, pump coming to the uh, ceftazidim and avibactam uh, that is uh, which is we commonly used in a uh, in, in our country as zafiseft which has been used for a complicated intra abdominal infection uh, complicated uh, urinary tract infection including pyelonephritis and uh, hospital acquired bacterial pneumonia and ventilator associated pneumonia and it is been used in enterobacteria esbls amc K, uh, kpc Uh, and the organisms like Klebsiella uh, pneumoniae, Enterobacter, Proteus, Serratia, but that has no activity against the uh, NDM. Now uh, the data uh, from the AIMS shows that uh, the, the uh, so that is from the Septicemia and Avibacter. This was uh, the uh, 
applied only to the isolate which were cholestin sensitive only now they were just for, uh, we have done only for the 40 isolate in our lab and uh, and all of them were uh, xdr out of that 35 percent were sensitive to the septazidine and avibactam which has been uh, communicated to the clinician uh, regarding the same uh, coming to the newer, uh, but we, uh, now we are talking about the drugs, but with the drugs comes also the toxicity, especially with the polymyxin. Now, polymyxin is a very nephrotoxic drug which ranges, the nephrotoxicity ranges around 14 to 26%. And we all know that the, the last resort of uh, antibiotics would be the last resort of, the last resort drug is polymyxin. And the white, and we have also, and we have upcoming uh, carbapenem resistance. So we have we have limited our uh, treatment option. So in this scenario, uh, the newer drug clinical trial like polymyxin analog has been developed like SPR206 and SPR207, which are right now in the uh, phase one clinical trial and has been treat, uh, used in the treatment for the UTI, hospital acquired pneumonia and ventilator associated pneumonia. Now this was all about the drug. Now what about the uh, alternative? Is there any alternative drug approach? We know that the monotherapy of any uh, antibiotic is not efficacious in any in all the bacterial infections. So uh, it's, uh, it's an uh, usual process of using an antibiotic with the adjuvants. Now adjuvant with an antibiotic, uh, we commonly uh, the, the classical example of uh, adjuvant we use is the uh, amoxicillin and clavulanic acid in the form of augmentin, which has been in use since last 30 years. Now there are two types of anti uh, adjuvants. That is the class one adjuvant and the class two adjuvant. Now the class one adjuvant, the difference between these two adjuvants is the class one adjuvants act on the uh, bacteria uh, acting like an antibiotic. What we have seen in the clavulanic acid, that is amoxicillin. Other beta lactamase inhibitors, other uh, inhibitors will be avibactam, rebulbactam, and relibactam, which are co-formulated with the septazidine. And now this, uh, the, the, now this is the uh, answer of perizone, cerebactam. These are all the uh, class 1 adjuvants which will act on the pathogen. Now next is the class 2 uh, uh, adjuvant which will potentiate the antibiotic action but it does not uh, act along with the uh, antibiotic but it will uh, uh, accentuate the host properties. Exam you know, these are also in the clinical trials, but not for the use as of now. Uh, example uh, are E5564, TAK24, and hypoxic uh, inducible factor, which is a master regulator of the uh, innate immunity. Now, all, now, what are the, uh, you know, the question comes is, is there any alternate non-drug therapy? We have talked about alternate drug therapy, now we are talking about the alternative non-drug therapy. Yes, we do have the alternative non-drug therapy. The first and the most common is the bacteriophage therapy. Now, this is also a very age-old process uh, of the treating EMR pathogen. The next is the deep repurposing of the drug. Here, the repurposing is the these uh, uh, glatrimer acetate, uh, that is uh, uh, which were used for the multiple sclerosis now it has been used for the infectious uh, agents like example in e coli acinetobacter bomini and pseudomonas aeruginosa and monoclonal antibodies antimicrobial peptides and vaccine development and fecal microbiota transplantation now coming just one one slide regarding the same uh, bacteriophage therapy is safe specific and it has auto dosing and it has low inherent toxicity when compared to the antibiotic but the but here it should be tailored according to the treatment and the organism which has successfully treated till now uh, in, the, in when it comes to escape pathogens is e coli pseudomonas acinetobacter and staph aureus and it, it uh, like uh, if in bacteria uh, uh, sorry uh, antimicro uh, antibiotic it, it has minimal disruption of the my normal flora and it has a uh, biofilm clearance the mono, uh, coming to the monoclonal antibodies uh, therapy now uh, the, since um, decades it is known that the monoclonal antibody was mainly used for the oncological or the rheumatic condition but the bacterial specific bacterial specific monoclonal antibody uh, is, is a key feature which makes it well positioned for the treatment of EMR pathogen uh, EMR. But till date, only three monoclonal antibody has been approved, but none of them has been as, uh, against the escape pathogen. The first being the vaccine uh, vacuumab and the uh, oblitoximab, uh, which is used for the bacillus anthracis, uh, that is inhalation anthrax for both adults and the pediatric patient. The last is the, uh, the, the sorry, the next is the uh, bez, uh, bezlotoximab, which is used for the clostridioides deficit infection.
These are the three uh, monoclonal antibodies which are in use right now as of now. Now, then coming to the next uh, therapy that is antimicrobial peptide. Now, this antimicrobial peptide was first discovered in around 1980s. Now, uh, these antimicrobial peptides are the, uh, nothing but the, they are just the host defense peptide which are being uh, which are positively charged and are amphiphilic that is both hydro and the uh, hydrophilic and the hydrophobic uh, molecule when they bind with the negatively charged antibody uh, sorry uh, the bacterial cell there is an electrochemical change in the cell membrane which causes the uh, cell damage and the permeation of the large molecule that is the proteins will enter into the bacterial cell wall thereby uh, disrupting the cell membrane and destroying the cell and thereby eventually the cell death of the microorganism. No, currently uh, the, coming with the, the coming to the vaccine development now they have been uh, uh, but this is con this is one of the most effective strategy to reduce the AMR pathogens. Um, AMR like we have seen in streptococcus pneumoniae and haemophilus influenza type B but unfortunately uh, no vaccine is being currently available for the SK pathogen because uh, they, uh, they fail to elicit an immunogenic response affecting the travel uh, affecting the clinical trials. Uh, the last is the fecal microbiota transplantation uh, that is uh, the, the, the antibiotic exposure especially in the in case of long-term hospital care uh, that can actually alter the micro uh, patient microbiota now the in in such terms the fecal uh, microbiota transplantation uh, is being currently investigated for protection uh, against the AMR bacterial colonization and the highlight of this FMT is it reverses the gut dysbiosis. Now, this was the article which I have come across while searching this is uh, uh, in these the 30 blood disorders patient where, uh, where, uh, where given the three types FMT transplantation and later on they have seen they have seen that the, there was a gut uh, dysbiosis that is the, uh, the gut colonization that is they have reversed the gut colonization especially with VRE and CRAB and uh, CRE patients. Uh, CRE uh, infections. Now to complete the list, we have nanoparticles. That is, the nanoparticles is uh, uh, substances. Nano is that is something which is less than 100 micrometer. And example, the, the, one of the commonest example here we use silver nanoparticle. Now they are helpful. Now they create a, uh, the reactive oxygen species, which will This will disturb the uh, This will uh, damage the membrane and uh, disturb the membrane integrity, and thereby uh, reducing. Uh, killing the cell and uh, one more is the toll like receptor agonist and antagonist that is TLR4, TLR2 targets which are used for the antisepsis drug TLR3 and TLR9 which are antiviral drug and uh, the last is the endolysin that is the prostaglandin degra degrading proteins that allow phage to escape from bacterial cell during phage lytic cycle example would be recombinant endolysin now this is uh, this was about the, uh, the, the therapy uh, therapy now, when we talk about the AMR, I'm not talking about the uh, AMR cellulans is in incomplete. So, uh, to complete it, I would say in 2013, the network of AMR, which was started by the ICMR uh, in 2013, later on, NCDC uh, also started their AMR cellulans in 2014. But in 2015, these two, uh, NCDC and ICMR, has collaborated with the, uh, the CDC to assess already existing practices uh, in India to formulate any new guidelines regarding the healthcare associated infection. So uh, looking after uh, coming uh, into conclusion in 2019, they have set up the national health policies for rapid standardization of the guidelines for existing uh, antibiotic use and limiting the use of the uh, antibiotic. <laughs> While uh, searching the uh, this AMR, I came across this 30% rule of this antimicrobial prescribing fact, which should be uh, which is very common nowadays is 30% of all the hospitalized patients uh, in patients at any given time receive antibiotics and 30% of the antibiotics are prescribed inappropriately in the community 30% of the all surgical prophylaxis is inappropriate 30% of hospital pharmacy costs are due to antimicrobial use and 10 to 30% of the antimicrobial cost can be saved by the anti good antimicrobial stewardship programs. Uh, I would end this seminar by seeing this line from the Paul Ehrlich that drug resistance follows the drug like a, uh, a faithful shadow which I have come across while searching articles. Thank you. Uh, any questions?
is the question come is all is talked about uh, in the behavioral trust about plasmomycin can you elaborate on that have you read it mm, yeah. it belongs to which group how, how it is about the rabbit cycle these are the the tetracycline well, tetracycline drugs uh, tetracycline uh, compound drugs uh, which is been used in the the complicated intra abdominal uh, infections and uh, that's yeah what are the drugs you are taught read the mechanism of action how they are working are they beneficial over other drugs okay Oh, Islam, there is a question from Ramana. Uh, rapid methods to detect AM, AMR. What are the rapid methods to detect AMR? Methods to detect AMR. Mm. Uh, there is a gene which can detect this gene, and the results come early. Uh, there is one rapid detection test that is the uh, uh, gene export for the uh, MRSA. One uh, gene export for the MRSA. One is that is one of the rapid detection. Mm, other would be uh, the carbon P test uh, for the beta lactamases. Uh, and the rest uh, rest uh, i need to search i mean i definitely get back with the answer so what Rapid method, which is you, which is used in our department. I was asking. Do you know any rapid method which is used in our department? No, I'm not aware of it. Should we make a list or send them? Who should we make a list? Any other questions? Ask me. Any other questions? I will um, mail the what are the questions which have been unanswered then in the in these slides. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.